So here's a scenario where I've already packed and goed, I've saved my inventor data to my Fusion drive. So within Fusion 360, I can simply go open and I'm able to select from that inventor data that I, that I uploaded or associatively synced with Fusion Team. Now notice that the entire assembly and all its parts are here because that's a requirement to be able to you know, transfer that data or utilize that data with Infusion. And what's going to happen is notice that that data has come in. So I can see the full hierarchy. I can see the inventor assembly, its subassembly, its components, and that data is now usable. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new component here. So I'm going to use this inventor data as a reference. It hasn't converted this data. This data is still sitting in inventor format and this is advantageous in this case because I'm going to design a cover around this assembly but I want it to update as the inventor model changes so that this cover is always going to fit. I'm going to create a sketch. We'll apply some constraints. So I'm just applying some sketch constraints you know, later as I make a change to the inventor model that the, the part will update within Fusion. So we're going to extrude, create the outside surface. We'll make some simple tweaks here. We'll just take the edge and we'll just manipulate it. We'll apply some symmetry. We'll adjust the back half of that or front half, depending on how you look at it. And again, I'm just going to take that edge and just kind of tug on it and make some changes to it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this design. But I'm going to save this, in this case, something simple just as new cover. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to Inventor. I'm going to place that cover in here. So I'm just going to do a straight place. So I'm going to change my files of type. I'm going to change it to, to Fusion, obviously, because that's what I want to open. So I've now browsed to, selected it and that cover is now available there because I saved it. So I'm going to select it and it's going to come up with the standard AnyCAD import model dialog. So whether this was a step file, a SAT file, a SOLIDWORKS file, it's the same dialog. However, what I'm going to make sure that I select is the reference model. So I don't want Inventor to convert this, although that's an option. I don't want Inventor to convert this. I want to use this as a reference model. I'm also not interested in bringing back in that inventor data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over here to the select tab and I'm going to deselect everything but that new component. So I'm going to click OK. It's going to start the import process. And what's done now is it's brought in that cover. So I'm just going to ground it at the, at the origin because I already know it's located or orientated in the right, right location and it's going to snap into place. The notice in the browser, we can see the new cover. It's a linked. We can tell by, by the, the little icon on it. But what it's done is brought that model in. So I can't change this cover directly because remember I attached it as a reference and I didn't convert it. Let's go make a change to this inventor assembly. So I'm going to take this base component here. And I'm going to adjust the, the length of it, which in turn also adjusts the width as we can see. We can see the left side also updated because it's just another instance. Notice that the cover didn't update the match. Now remember, this is a fusion design. It's not an inventor. Um, it's not an inventor model. So I'm going to save this. And just of note here, what I've done is is my this assembly exists on my local fusion drive. So now that that's occurred, let's flip back over to to fusion. And what I'm going to see is that I'm able to do an update. So it didn't update real time, but I can see that it understands that data in here is not to the current version. So I'm going to do an update. It's going to tell me here that it, it could cause some problems. So it's just letting me know that, hey, like this has changed. I'm going to try to bring this in, uh, but we'll see what happens is really what it's saying. So I'm going to say update anyways, and what we're going to see is that assembly is going to update in here. And since I, I linked 
that cover, remember I applied those constraints and I applied those dimensions, so it's, it's referencing that assembly. What we're gonna see is that the cover then updates to, to match, it just, just happened. So of course we could go around and around and around using this process. I could you know, continue on developing this cover, go back to Inventor, update it, you know, if I needed to make some changes into Inventor, um, come back in Fusion and update it. So I've now got this round trip associativity, basically using the desktop connector and Fusion team as that bridge in between.